Hello, welcome to a new video. As you can see, it's a new background. I'm in my new apartment. That is why I have not been uploading lately. I've been super busy moving and hanging out with my family and I haven't really had the time to sit down and to create quality content. And today we'll be talking about lifestyle inflation as a young adult. This is something that I'm currently facing and I've dealt with in the past and maybe I can add my perspective on it. And if you're dealing with it, I hope you can find some value. So lifestyle inflation, what is it? It's pretty much when you get a income that is significantly larger than what you've had in the past. You spend money on nicer things to represent that income. That's pretty much what it is. I know on a lot of forums, it's lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep is seen as a bad thing, but I think a little bit of lifestyle inflation is actually very healthy in your development process. And I guess to live as a young adult. I know that lifestyle creep gets such a bad rep on financial independence and forums and books. It's almost like live below your means, live frugally, keep living like you're a broke college kid for 10, 20 years, and maybe you can retire one day be financially independent. But for myself, that seemed kind of miserable. Um, being broke 24 seven does not feel great. You are living out of a scarcity mindset and you are kind of sacrificing the now for the future. And I think sacrificing a little bit of the present for the future is a great thing, but you shouldn't sacrifice all of it because at the end of the day, you won't know if you'll live that long. And I'm not telling you to go yellow with and obviously spend your money on extravagant things and not have a penny to your name or anything to show for it. But I think Spending money on quality things to upgrade your life to make your life easier is a great thing. For example, I just moved to a new apartment. It is significantly smaller, but more expensive, but it's in a nicer neighborhood. In my old apartment, I was absolutely miserable. It was in a very dangerous area. Crime was very high. There are shootings like down the road. Yes, I was saving money, but the cost of mental health, you can't put a price on. I didn't feel safe walking alone at night. You know, and I'm a guy, I'm 5'11", I can defend myself and everything, but I did not feel safe. In my old apartment, there were a lot of car break-ins. I remember after a month I moved in, all the tires were stolen from a car, like literally three cars away. And this happened two times in my building. I put a price on safety over everything because like, how can you save all the money you saved up if you get killed or injured or you get robbed? There is no logic in that. So for myself, I was able to justify the means of moving to a nicer area and a new apartment. Yes, it's smaller. Yes, I'm paying more, but I feel safer. My mental wellness has significantly increased. My anxiety has decreased, which is amazing. For the first time, I feel like I can just go home and live at peace. I don't have to worry about someone breaking into my car or if I'll be held up at gunpoint or any of these things. But I guess another thing is like, generally, if there are things that you can justify that will make your life easier, I think you should go ahead and spend the money. I think there are quality things you shouldn't cheap out on and allow lifestyle creep. I think spending money in sh nice shoes that you're walking on and nice bed, you should have a genuinely good bed that supports your back so you're not aching and you can get quality sleep. And I guess electronics, I'm not telling you to go out and buy the newest iPhone every single year or the newest PS5 or the Xbox. But I'm saying if your phone is like an iPhone 6, I had an iPhone 6 plus all the way up until this year, which is super crazy. I had a phone from 2015 still operating in 2020, early 2021. And um, I finally upgraded and it felt so nice. Like my phone battery stopped dying and it's made my life so much easier. So I guess the way I can put it is generally upgrade your life if it makes your life simple, easier, more convenient, and obviously save money for the future, but don't go all out frugal where you're not just enjoying life. I know that like a lot of people say, live with roommates, save money, save money. It depends on your circumstances and situation. If you enjoy living with roommates, go ahead. But for myself, I can't live with roommates. I had a string of shitty roommates and it caused so many problems and anxiety that I just, I'm willing to just live alone and justify the cost because my mental health is number one. And when I'm in a clear state of mind, I'm able to achieve more and do more things, which kind of counteracts the price of living in a nicer apartment and living alone. And I guess coming home to a nice neutral area every single day where everything is exactly where you put it is so nice and not worrying about or if your roommate is drunk or I don't know, having friends over or if they're leaving dirty dishes. And it's just another thing to worry about. I'm able to conserve my energy and put it where it matters the most. I guess the point of this video is a little lifestyle inflation is definitely okay. You need to enjoy your life a little bit and you can't just delay it for one day when you're financially independent and you can finally be happy. Cause when you're so frugal, frugal, frugal all the time, like you kind of start cheaping out on quality items and you start missing out on quality items, which, which may impact your life and life situation. You know what I'm saying? Like you should eat healthy, get 
good food. Don't get the cheapest food. I mean, obviously fuel your body with amazing things, but I guess the whole lesson is balance, right? You have one life, you should feel it with the best possible things while obviously saving your money, but don't cheap out on everything. Don't miss out on life because you never know, things happen. You wanna make sure you had an awesome life before you pass away or anything like that. And if you do become financially independent and you're still alive, that's also amazing because now you have balance, right? Because you can enjoy your future and retirement, never have to worry about money again. But the whole point of financial independence movement is it doesn't have to be rushed. It doesn't have to be so grueling. It doesn't have to be depressing. It doesn't feel like you're missing out on life. If you're genuinely feeling like you're missing out on life, I think you should spend a little money on yourself and have some fun because the journey is supposed to be fun and that's supposed to be brutal. So I hope this helps. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.